what we've got here is failure to communicate. Say, kids, what time is it? Okay, gang, let's... Good morning. Today is Friday. It is the 19th of April. Overcast here in western New York. Hopefully this weekend will be nice for you no matter where you are. And it's going to be a very, very interesting weekend with the talk shows, etc., what's going on. It's been a very, very interesting week. You've seen protests all over the country on college campuses. Now, behind me here, there's a poster. It's 250 images of the baby boomer generation. You find that at howdyboomy.com. And there's images of demonstrations all across the country on college campuses back in the 60s. That was a big deal then because they were demonstrating against Vietnam, whatever. And it's a little bit different than what's going on now and the way it was handled. I'll give you an example. Being a graduate of the University of Notre Dame, it was an honor to walk up the stairs of the building that housed the Golden Dome. That's the administration building. You cannot walk up and down those stairs unless you're a graduate. Well, in that building are the administration offices. And during my tenure there, Dow Chemical Corporation came into those offices to recruit for potential employees. Now, Dow Chemical also made napalm, which was used in the Vietnam War. And all kinds of students showed up at the administration building, blocking the entrance to Dow Chemical's people there trying to recruit Notre Dame graduates because they didn't like the fact that Dow Chemical was making napalm. They denied fellow students access to interviews for Dow Chemical. Father Hesburgh, who was the president of the University of Notre Dame at the time, started walking amongst the kids, sitting in, blocking those doors. Didn't say anything. He was reading his prayer book, going all around him. Then he finally stopped, turned around and said, Gentlemen, I fully understand your right to protest. However, these people, the students who are seeking employment by Dow Chemical, also have a right to be interviewed by them. I'm going up to my room. I'm coming back down in 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, any student that's here blocking the entrances will have their identification handed over and they will be expelled from school. End of story. 15 minutes later, I think there were four kids there who were idiots having to explain to their parents why they were kicked out of school and they were suspended. That's the way a demonstration was handled back then. You see what's going on now? Nothing. No backbone by any administration. It's a sad, sad situation. Friday, shift head of the week, named after the Pinocchio in chief of the Democratic Party, Adam Schiff, who basically perpetrated a lie that is the Trump Russian collusion story for almost a year and a half before it was proven to be absolutely false. So this week we have a tremendous amount of people that could be given the shift head of the week. It could be National Public Radio, who was revealed by a whistleblower, a fellow editor, that is extremely biased, that there were 87 Democrats on the editorial staff and not one Republican, that everything was biased towards the Democratic Party, everything was biased against the Republican Party. He since was fired, so National Public Radio could be our shift head of the week. We could go for Merrick Garland, our attorney general, who says, oh, there's nothing wrong with Joe Biden. He's mentally sharp. Really? He said his uncle was eaten by cannibals after a plane crash. And I swear to God, Joe Biden loves Looney Tunes because I know Yosemite Sam put Bugs Bunny in a cauldron when he caught him in a jungle and he was going to cook him. I swear, Joe Biden loves Looney Tunes, and if you ever want to get an interview with Joe Biden, dress up either like Bugs Bunny or Yosemite Sam. It could be John Kirby, who is a press secretary. Joe Biden, when asked about what he, advice he would give Iran if they planned an attack on Israel, he said, don't. So John Kirby figures out it worked. He was asked about that. He said the word don't was all successful. Well, it wasn't, John. 
because Iran launched the largest attack on Israel in history, trying to promote and cause the exact, absolutely most damage. Don't. Did not work. They did. They're lucky that the defense systems that Israel has in place worked. But we're going to go with, I think, uh, the one who's been lying since her tenure, Karine uh, Jean-Pierre, the press secretary. She said that gas prices are now are well below what they were a year ago. And this administration is doing a fantastic job. Well, the gas prices now are $3.62 a gallon average nationwide. Last year at this time, they were $3.65, a three cent difference, as opposed to when Biden first took office and put in his anti-American oil company posture, shutting down pipelines, they got to $5.01. So she thinks that going down by $0.03, cents, which makes the gas price nearly 60% higher than it was when Donald Trump was president of the United States, is a success for the Biden administration. That's how they play with numbers. She lies every time she gets up on the podium. She is his press secretary. Why? She's black. She's female. She's a lesbian. How can you argue with that? Not competent that she fix all of the uh, gender-affirming status that the Biden administration wants because they want to show they're open-minded. Forget competence. Jean-Pierre, our shift head of the week. Have a great weekend, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everything brings joy and happiness to you. Watch the Howdy Boomy Show, the Howdy Boomy podcast on YouTube, just punch in into your computer the Howdy Boomy Show. Truth, justice, the American way. God bless you. God bless the United States of America.